One day, Percy stopped at the airfield. Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold. Who are you? They're nice arms, said Harold. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you could hover? Certainly not. I think railways are slow, said Harold. They're not much use and quite out of date. He whirled his arms and buzzed away. There was Harold. The race was on. Go it, Percy, he yelled. You're gaining. Well done, Percy, shouted the driver. We're gaining. Harold's still hovering. He's looking for a place to land. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. And we beat the helicopter on our old branch line. Per there, ready for action, was Harold the helicopter. The inspector had made a plan, and together they took off into the sky. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Think nothing of it. Glad to be of service. Any time. Then there was a familiar whirring sound. With landing lights shining brightly, Harold the helicopter touched down gently in the snow. Bringing the greatest surprise of all, Santa Claus! Later, Percy saw Harold. Sorry, Percy. Can't talk. I'm on high alert. Bad weather's due. My help's always needed. Mind how you go, Percy. Huh, <laughs> huffed Percy. As long as I've got rails to run on, I can go anywhere in any weather anyhow. Goodbye. Then he saw Harold. Something thudded onto Percy's boiler, whistled Percy. Good to be of service, replied Harold and buzzed away. Sir Topham had arrived in Harold, but not at being a submarine. I don't know what you two get up to sometimes. Percy was not alone for long. Good morning, word Harold. I always said railways were out of date, but you're so slow with the mail. You should give everyone their stamps back. Per I say, you two, there's news flying about. All over the place. They're going to scrap the mail train and use me instead. Wings work wonders, you know. Always. Rubbish! The next afternoon, Percy passed the airfield and saw Harold. The wind's too strong, grumbled Harold. I've been grounded. Always. <laughs> Suddenly, they were rudely interrupted. Wakey, wakey, hovered Harold. That's the regatta. Lots of boats, lots of races. Great fun. I hover around in case I'm needed. Do you go to the horizon, asked Duck? Yes, and beyond. Certainly. I can land on ships, you know. Anywhere, anytime. Goodbye. Good to see you again, Duck, word Harold as he landed carefully on the platform. The man was gently helped to safety. My job is to stay at sea in case of other emergencies. Otherwise, I would take this gentleman to hospital myself. Must fly. Goodbye. There's a shooting star, said Duck. Don't be daft, laughed Percy. It's Harold. Look, he's hovering overhead. Something fluttered down towards Duck. Percy was soon steaming to Harold's airfield. Beep, beep, whistled Percy. We're stranded. Where's all, replied Harold. I like an emergency to keep me warm. And he buzzed away. 
Harold was already there, busily dropping food for Thanksgiving dinner to the people below. The lakes and mountains have many visitors, and Harold the helicopter flies the sky, making sure that no one is in trouble. All present and correct. Time to return to base. Then Harold noticed something. Harold flew lower for a closer inspection. I'm Harold. Who are you? Don't recall seeing you before. What brings you this way? This was no time for a chat with a helicopter. Well done. Cheers. And keep up the good work. Cheeky chopper, muttered Rusty. Splendid to see you again, whizzed Harold. I'm completing my evening's lookabout. The little diesel purred back home. On the way, Percy saw Harold. I haven't time for a race today. Then Harold landed. The wind from his blades blew Sir Topham Hatt's hat off. Harold the helicopter was inspecting the dam as Toby arrived. Then they saw Harold who swooped low and shouted urgently to them. We're going to drop a rope to you. Attach it to yourself, quickly now. Harold flew over to him. Catch the rope and pull Toby to safety, he called. When the floods were over and the dam mended, the villagers had a big party for Toby, hosted by Sir Topham Hatt. Gordon was the first to see Harold. Sir Topham Hatt has chosen Harold because he thinks he's more important than me. Well, he's not. Harold can't fly through tunnels. Percy stopped by a signal on his branch line near a field where sheep were grazing. Harold hovered for a while, then buzzed away. But solving the mystery of Harold and the visitor came first. The next day, but because they were watching Harold, they missed a signal and went on to the wrong line. Later, Thomas pulled Gordon clear with the breakdown trip. Sir Topham Hatt still uses Harold to fly above the island. But all the engines know that Harold isn't spying on them. He is just being very useful. At last, Harold landed. Sorry I'm late, Great Western. Had a uh, bit of a problem with one of my arms. Kept letting me down when I was uh, meant to be up. You know how it is. He was high in the sky with Harold. They are. You can have tea and crumpets there. They were just about to board Harold. That's Tiger Moth, grumbled Harold. It's rude and flies much too low. Please take us up, Harold, before there's another disturbance. A few days later, Harold arrived at their holiday home with bad news. Uh, it's Tiger Moth, said Harold's pilot. It's gone missing. Do you wish to join the search party with us? Bye. spoke to the pilot. You are showing off and flying dangerously. I will, if you'll excuse me, I shall return to my holiday. Jolt! And Harold the helicopter to pick her up immediately. A few minutes later, there was a surprise for Mrs. Kindly. All President Correct called Harold. I'm uh, here on a flying visit. Hurry aboard, Mrs. Kindly, and uh, fly the sky with me. Compliments of uh, Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, but he was happy for Mrs. Kindly. She was soon flying high with Harold. I've never seen the island like this before. It's...
powder everywhere. Let's start laughing now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, fruits. Bit of a dust up. Love to stay and clean up. Got to go. Bye now. <laughs> Harold the helicopter loves flying. Up in the bright blue sky, over the island of Sodor, he looks out for anyone in distress. Sometimes he delivers the mail. The mail run is done. That's what friends are for. Delivering the mail is an engine's job. Just then they heard a familiar sound coming from above. Hello, said Harold. Sir Topham Hatt says you need my help. That's what friends are for. There was nothing Percy could do. Percy's driver helped load the mailbags into Harold's cargo net. I'd have to make too many trips. Then I'd be as slow as Percy. They loaded all the mail into Harold's net at once. Just as they finished loading, but it was too late. Harold had already taken off. But then they all heard a strange sound. Watch out for those trees, Harold, cried his pilot. My net is too heavy, wailed Harold. We must try to help him. Just get someone to pull me out of this haystack, sputtered Harold. And Percy did, as fast as he could. The next day, Harold's engine was fixed and he was flying again. All the engines tooted, and Harold hovered so low that only Percy could hear. Thanks for getting help to pull me out of that haystack, my friend, he said. When Percy arrived at Callan Station, he was very upset. Harold the helicopter was at Callan Station picking up medical supplies. Hello, Percy, he called. Emily loves her coaches and being part of Sir Topham Hatt's railway. The helicopter is glad not to be a steam engine. He is much happier flying in the sky. I'd like to help, called Harold, but I'm on patrol. He was looking for engines that might be in trouble. Meanwhile, the engines puffed to and fro with their loads for the party. Percy was delivering deck chairs and decorations, tables. Thanks for the invitation, called Harold. But duty calls, and he whirred away. Harold was landing at his airfield to get more fuel, when of course that lives close by. Harold was beginning to feel left out of the celebrations. He wished more than ever that he could help. Thomas puffed in with some power. Where are you going next, buzzed Harold. Everyone except me, replied Harold. I'm on duty. But no one needs rescuing, sighed Harold. Then came the surprise. Harold's pilot received an urgent call from Sir Topham Hatt. Pegasus is stuck in a ditch. If All set and ready for action, reported Harold. Harold flew to the rescue as fast as he could. What happened? He asked Thomas. Pegasus in my sling. Steamed away. And Harold gently lifted him into the air and carefully carried him across the fields. Children cheered for Harold. He had saved the day. Soon, Pegasus was hitched up to the cart. Harold was happy. He'd stayed on duty and had fun at the party, too. At the airfield, there was another problem. They knew there'd be music and lots of fun. 
Good morning, called Harold. As he puffed towards the station, he saw Harold the helicopter talking to Toby. Remember, Toby, said Harold. Don't tell Thomas about the surprise. Then Harold buzzed away. And that evening, the engines were very excited. At last, it was time to show Thomas the surprise. Please find him, Harold, Edward puffed. I'll do my best, said Harold, and he took to the air. It was Harold, the helicopter. There you are, old chap, he called. It's time for you to collect the children and to see the surprise. Yes, said Harold. It's a special thank you for keeping the lines clear of snow. Of course not, said Harold. The children are waiting for you at Wellsworth Station. Thomas loved pulling carriages full of children, so he... Then Harold the helicopter arrived. He had brought Sir Topham Hatt to the coaling plant. Why are you all here? Thomas told Sir Topham Hatt all about the meeting. Sir Topham Hatt was delighted. It was Harold the helicopter. The airport looks wonderful, guys, said Harold. The airplane will soon be here, said Sir Topham Hatt. James told Harold the helicopter. And Harold the helicopter told Harvey. And there was Harold the helicopter. His blades made a wind that whirred and stirred. The sound whooshed and whooshed as the blades spun around. And Harold's bright light flickered on and off, off and on. Hello, hummed Harold. I was dropping off some packages for the hill farms. What are you doing? No problem, old buddy. I'll show you the way. And Harold took to the air. Suddenly, he saw Harold the helicopter. Harold had bad news. Thick fog rolling in on the headland, Harold shouted. Puff carefully, Thomas. And Harold whirred away over the treetops. Thomas was very scared now. Up the road from the other side of the hill. The great whoosh of his blades blew Sir Topham Hatt's hat into the air. Just then, Harold the helicopter arrived. Another storm warning, I'm afraid, he shouted. High winds on the way and heavy rain. Heavy rain can cause landslides on that hilly route, he said. And Harold flew away. Thomas looked for a long time, and he forgot all about the Admiral with Sir Topham Hatt. The Admiral is late for the opening of the museum, he boomed crossly. Harold will now take the Admiral to the museum. Fancy believing in a silly old story, laughed Harold. F is for friendship, and flying and free. G is for good, as good friends ought to be. Let's sing about Harold, our friend in the air. Up in the clouds, he can see everywhere. Patrolling the island, friend to all engines, and so that is what F is for friendship and flying and free. What's after G and then comes before I? H is for Harold way up in the sky. F is for friendship and flying and free. What's after G? The top of hat needs him, he's waiting on her. <laughs> who told Harold, who immediately flew off to find Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat had been having tea when Harold arrived. Thomas has discovered a hidden town, shouted Harold. 
Sir Topham Hatt was very excited. Harold touched down and found Bertie the bus. Harold too is swooping low across the Sodor sky. Hello, Henry! The special woodsmen can't get through to the wishing tree. They're the only ones that can help. Without them, the tree will have to be cut down. Harold swooshed in. There's bad weather all over the island. It's very hard to see the tracks. The signal changed, and James puffed away, pushing his train. Good morning! 